Welcome back everyone. Today I'm taking a look at a level 140 build that looks to maximize the damage output on lava skills. For this we're using of course the Blasphemous Blade, the Eruption Ash of War and the Magma Blade. If you like you can also use the Magma Worm Greatsword, which also has a Lava Ash of War, but I found it's not as effective as these others. This build also uses a low weight side weapon with Endure, which will be very useful since we have no poise to tank. The Frenzied Flame Seal is the best to cast buffs since it has no weight, and a parrying shield which can be used to quickly switch against aggressive enemies for a surprise parry. Now there are two versions of this build, the Strength Route or the Faith Route. The Strength build is good if you plan to use your weapon attacks more than the Ashes of War, and good for Eruption since this Ash of War does more damage with Strength. However, the Faith build is better for the Magma Blade and the Blasphemous Blade since the Ashes of War deal a lot more damage than the Strength version. My good friend Master Ugway here has volunteered to help me show the damage difference, and as you can see, the Faith version does almost 30% more damage with both Ashes of War. To reach this damage, we will use the Rakshasa set, which increases damage by 2% per piece, the Talisman of Dread for another 14%, Shard of Alexander for another 15%, Fire Scorpion Charm for a 12% fire damage increase, and the Earthtree's favor to get a little HP and stamina boost, and also to avoid fat rolling when using the heavier weapons. Our Flask will use the Flame Shouting Crack tier for another 12.5% fire damage boost, and the Oil Soak tier which coats close enemies in oil, applying a debuff that makes them take an additional 20% fire damage. Golden Bow grants a 7.5% damage increase in PvP and another 15% fire and regular damage with Flame Grant Me Strength. Now, this build is very strong damage wise, but it also has a lot of weaknesses. Let's go over the strengths first. Now, the very first and obvious strength is the one shot capabilities of this build. As you see there, if phantoms just come charging at you, uh, you can just one shot them with Magma Shower which deals a ton of damage if, if you are completely buffed. Uh, for example here, this guy just charges in and gets one shot for it. Magma Shower is also very good for AoE and it has a lot of poise damage. This is what saves me here. Um, the host was about to hit me and he got stunned with the edge of the first strike. The Corpse Sword also has a really great running attack. It comes out very fast, so people sometimes don't expect it. This build is also very good against very aggressive opponents, because you can just surprise them whenever they are about to attack you. In this case I get hit real hard, and this guy just comes charging in and gets almost one shot for it. Then I just use the quick running attack to get the kill. Something very useful about Magma Shower is the Lava Pulse that it leaves in the ground. In this case I just get the Lava Pulse out, uh, it does a little bit of chip damage to the Phantom and also to the host that is behind me. I get a little bit of help from the NPC back there and then I just chase them down with the Ash of War which has very good chasing potential. The fact that we're using the Blasphemous Blade here is very good against casters and ranged attack users. So in this case the host and a phantom are just spamming spells and we can't get close. Uh, but when I get the chance I switch to the Blasphemous Blade and go for the Ash of War whenever, whenever I can. And when it hits, stacking so much damage makes it that it deals almost 2000 damage and then we get two one shots back to back here. That just goes to show how strong this build can be when you are completely buffed. You can just one shot anybody with this. If you're using the strength version of this build, your normal attacks can still deal a lot of damage. As you can see here, I dealt almost 1000 damage on a single hit, and then I just go for the kill with the throwing knife. If you hit the first part of the eruption Ash of War, the second one will be guaranteed. With the strength version of this build, it can one shot some phantoms. Besides doing a lot of damage and leaving a lava pool in the ground, that is also very useful as we saw earlier. Eruption also grants a lot of poise when you are in the middle of the animation. So in this case, I actually am able to poise through the first hit of that uh, 
big greatsword that he has. Even though the armor that I'm using is not very good for tanking, it has uh, less than 60 poise. So it can be very useful to trade, even if you don't have any time to use Endure before using the attack. In this case I'm still using the strength version of this build, so you can see that the Ashes of War of Magma Blade um, are not dealing as much damage as we saw before. So I switched to the Eruption Greatsword. So my plan here is to somehow get a hit on most of them with the Ash of War. But I make a mistake here with the running attack and I just get blendered and almost uh, died because of that. So I just try to make some space, I roll uh, towards some opponents, some enemies, so I have some time to heal. The host here is not dealing that much damage, so I am able to get some breathing space here. Eruption also doesn't have that good tracking, so in this case I try to hit the phantom, but the tracking is not that good. Still I get a rolling weapon attack which almost one shots him <laughs> because he didn't have that much health and then I just get the kill with the regular light attack. Because the enemies are gone I try to go inside so I can get some help from these other enemies here or at least divide uh, the party and take them one by one. The phantom follows me so that's exactly what I want. I go behind the table just to heal so try to use that uh, whenever you need to use your Estus you need to put something in between you and the enemies so you have some space to heal. I'm trying here to use just the regular attacks of the Greatsword to get some damage in. Here I get the Phantom with the second part of the eruption and then the second hit uh, gets the kill. As you can see I get if I get hit I take a ton of damage so you have to be careful whenever you are fighting against a group of enemies. In this case the host is not very good so uh, I just wait for him to go for something and then just trade with the great sword. Eventually he gets a little bit more aggressive so he falls for a complete eruption true combo and he still goes for another attack so he gets killed because of that. Now let's take a look at some of the weaknesses of this build. The very first one that you may notice is that if it rains you will deal less damage, somewhere around 10% less damage. That can make the difference sometimes. In this case, I get the host real low. I get the kill with the throwing knife, but that was less than 100 health left, which could have made the difference between me dying or not. Here's another instance of where the rain can make the difference. So in this case, I'm fighting against the caster and the host. Uh, I poise with the eruption Ash of War. He survives with less than 100 HP again, and then I get killed by the caster. After testing these Ashes of War, I definitely noticed that eruption is not very good in most circumstances. So, for example, here the host is camping in this tower here with Hualalu. I know I can probably go for an endure and poise through that. But as you can see, the Endure doesn't last last enough for the second part of the eruption to go through. I thought it would, so I end up getting killed here because of that. It seems Blasphemous Blade doesn't provide the same amount of poise than Eruption. So you have to be careful when you're trying to use it to trade against enemies, because you can get poise broken when you try that against some weapons. Here I'm fighting against a team of three. I get the host alone and I go for a magma shower that almost one shots him. But I'm not completely able to finish the kill. His team finally comes and helps him to survive. So I have to be a little bit more patient and wait for an opportunity to get a kill on at least one of the phantoms. So my plan here is uh, to lure them back into the dungeon so I can get a little bit more help from the, at least the layout and some enemies if I find, find them. Luckily they just run straight at me and this phantom gets one shot and gets finished actually by the lava pools which goes to show why they can be useful in some cases. I switch to the eruption greatsword since they are being kind of aggressive. I make the mistake of trying to Estus when the host is 
very close behind me. So whenever you try to go for an Estus, try to do it uh, when you have a lot of space or at least a corner when you know that you will not be hit by the phantoms. I make the same mistake here again. My best shot would just be to heal below where they can't hit me. And my plan next would be to switch to the Blasphemous Blade and hopefully get a one-shot kill with that since the eruption is not working here. Uh, eventually one of the phantoms get, gets really aggressive and I get a beautiful double hit here which one-shots the phantom and deals almost 1700 damage to the host. At least buys me some space to just fight alone with the host. And here is where I make the mistake of trying to poise with the Ash of War against his knife. I thought I had the poise for that, but I end up dying because this armor is not meant to trade like that. And that's pretty much it. In my opinion, this build is definitely not the optimal way to invade, since you have so little room for error with so low resistances and the poise. In my next video, I'll be optimizing this build for invasions, so stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching until the end and if you found the video entertaining or useful, let me know by commenting or leaving a like. See you in the next one.